when you try to explain to people that don't use Emacs about org mode, they are confused. They don't understand what is the point. And I was like that. I switched from Vim over to Emacs. And even after using Emacs for a few months, still, I didn't quite understand just how amazing org mode was. It is a complete game changer because... Many people have this misconception. I know I did. I just thought org mode was another kind of markdown, right? <laughs> a markup language or markdown language yeah, is similar to how people say things like markdown itself is kind of a game changer because you can write everything in markdown kind of a shorthand, right? Or, or people talk about how LaTeX is great and Graph is great. And I just thought org mode was very similar to things like that. But org mode is so much more than just a form of markdown. And when you add some of the extra org mode extensions like org agenda, which is the topic of today's video, it just really turns Emacs into this amazing productivity tool because you can use it for to-do lists and scheduling, project management. You can plan out every single thing you want to do for the day, the week, the month, the year. And I've never been one of those people that actually do that, that schedule everything out and to use to-do lists and things like that. I've never found them useful for my workflow. But the more that I play with org mode and org agenda, I could see myself actually using these things. So let me show you some of this in action. Let me go ahead and launch my Emacs here. This is Doom Emacs. And in Doom Emacs, if you hit space FR for searching for recent files, I'm going to search for a file that I titled agenda.org. And let me hit enter and I'm going to zoom in here. Now, right now, this is just an empty document, but I'm going to show you a little bit of some org mode basics and then how org agenda plays into all this as well. So I've done some videos in the past talking about some of the basics of org mode, but just a refresher here. If I get into insert mode here and I do a single asterisk, this is a top level heading and I'm going to call this task list. I'm going to hit enter and then I'm going to do a second level heading by doing two asterisks and then I'm going to hit enter and then I'm going to write the word to do. And when I do, it changes color and then the to do item I'm making a note of is I need to make a video about org agenda. Now let's talk about org agenda. If you do meta X and type the word org agenda. That would launch org agenda, but you see in Doom Emacs, there is a key binding for it, space O capital A. So I'm going to use that key binding because uh, if you're going to learn to use org agenda, you're going to launch it all the time. You might as well learn the key binding for it. So space O capital A, and then you get this new menu that comes up. A gives you the agenda for the current week or the current day. T gives you a list of all the uh, to do entries that you have. And then it has some other options as well. They're less useful options or options that you're not going to use very often. Typically, you're either going to do A for the agenda or the T for the to do. So I'm going to do T for to do right now. And this gives me a list of all my to do items that org mode knows about, which is just one item right now because I, this is new to me. I typically don't make to do lists, but right now it's letting me know I have a to do item and it is make a video about org agenda. It doesn't have a, a scheduling date or anything. I didn't give it a time or date or anything. It's just marked as a to do item. Now, if I hit Q, I'll quit out of org agenda and I'll get back into my agenda.org document here that I created. Now, other than the asterisks, you know, to create these headings, these top level headings, second level headings, third level, fourth level, fifth level, etc. You could also make a list. Oh, I accidentally hit space. Let me hit space one more time. That's interesting, though. When you hit space on a to do item, I'll mention this. It does mark it as done. So and if I mark it as done, if I do space O capital A again and to get back into the agenda menu and then go to T for the to do list, you see I don't have a to do item listed anymore because once they're marked as done, they're no longer in this to do view Q to quit. I'm going to mark that as a to do item, though. What I want to do is I actually want to get into insert mode and hit enter. I wanted to show you guys how to create a list here. So I'm going to make a list to create a list. You typically do either the plus sign or the minus sign as far as your list bullet points. And I'm going to say you can use space dash M dash T dash T to mark as to do. 
<laughs> so what this is, is other than doing the space on an item to toggle to do and done, you could also do space MTT to just mark something as to do if it wasn't already marked. So let me, actually I'm gonna go and I'll just delete this here. And I've removed the to do item. Now if I wanna make it a to do item, specifically a to do item, space MTT and that marks it as to do. I'm gonna go back down here, and now that I'm on this line that is a plus symbol list kind of item, if I hit Control Enter, I get another plus sign, and then I could enter another list item. And what I'm gonna do on this line is I'm just gonna tell you guys that space MDS opens the org schedule. And escape to get into normal mode. So what I can do is I can go to this item, this to-do item, and space MDS opens the org schedule, meaning I can add a date. I can schedule a time and date for this to-do item event. So let me do that, space MDS. And now when I open the org schedule, you see I get this calendar down here. And you can actually just click on a date with the mouse. If you want to adjust the date with the keyboard, what you can do is you can do shift arrow, to adjust the date, you see the date is moving in the calendar. The date is also moving as far as the time and date at the bottom of the screen. But anyway, so today is Friday the 25th, so I will do today's date. And then for a time, you can do 24-hour time. As a matter of fact, it's typically going to be 24-hour time that shows up in your org agenda. But if you want to use AM and PM, you can actually do something like 9 p.m., and when I hit enter, though, it's going to convert it to 24 hour time. You see my to do item, make a video about org agenda is scheduled for tonight at 2100 hours, 9 p.m. And let me paste some of what I've already discussed here. I'll add that to the list and, and I may share this org mode document with you guys. But again, this is just some of the basics of org mode. We really are not getting that deep on this. But now that I've added a scheduled event. So now if I do space O capital A and then do T for to do, of course, I have the one to do item in this list. Let me cue to quit. But if I do space O capital A and do A for the agenda view, I have something in the agenda view now. I would not have had this had I not actually had something scheduled, but I have something scheduled now at 9 o'clock tonight. It's letting me know that the current time, by the way, is 14.11, so that's pretty cool. And then, of course, it has two-hour blocks also, and it just does this for today's date. If I had nothing scheduled for today, this would be empty. It doesn't do this for the other 10 days that it shows here in my org agenda. It just does today's date. It's letting you know what you have on your plate for today. Now let me cue to quit. I'm going to go back to this time here. So let me go down to the schedule time. You see it's Friday. You remember shift and the arrow keys adjusted the date in the org schedule. Well, you can do that directly in the document as well. If I do shift and then the right arrow key, watch the date changes from Friday to Saturday. And now let me do a space O capital A A for agenda. And now you see Friday today we don't have anything. It's just empty, but you see tomorrow, Saturday, we have something scheduled now at 2100 hours on Saturday night, make a video about org agenda. Now remember the space MTT to toggle something or, or to turn something into a to-do item. Well, if I go down to this to-do item and I do space MT, you see I get this list of all the states that I can make an item, including if I hit T one more time, make it a to-do item. If I hit P, it'll turn it into a project. S for start, W for wait, H for hold, D for done, K for kill, and, and some other items as well. These are the defaults in Doom Emacs. Now I can actually change these if I want different states, different ways to mark items. I can do that and I will show you how to do that later, but say I wanted to change this from a to-do item to a project. I just hit P on the keyboard. So space MT to get to that menu and then P to turn it into a project. If I want to go back to a to-do item, I would do space MT to get to this list and then T to turn it back to a to-do item. Now if you mark something as done or canceled or, or anything like that, it will no longer be in your to-do list view as well. Uh, so anytime you do uh, space O capital A T for the to-do list, once something is marked as done, it drops out of the list. 
So let me quit back out of that and I'm going to go down here and I'm going to hit O on the keyboard, start a new line and get me into insert mode. And I'm going to do two asterisks here and I'm going to write another to do item. And that did not convert because I got these spaces here. Okay, let me get rid of those unneeded spaces. Now this next to do item, I don't know, maybe I want to review lists and check boxes in org mode because uh, obviously we should discuss that. I already showed you kind of how to create a list, but I didn't show you guys this and I've done this on past videos though. If you do a uh, list heading and then do empty brackets with a space, that is considered a empty checkbox. And if you did control return, that adds a new list item at the same level, which we already discussed. So let me hit control return and then I could type a new list here. Maybe this works for bullets too, <laughs> because you know, these are technically bullet lists here where the asterisks were something else, more like headline levels. But either way, control return always at, gets you another line at the same level and the same type. Now, if you want to tick a checkbox, the default Emacs key binding for this is control C, control C. So control C, control C, you <laughs> see, turns that into an X, right? It's no longer unchecked. We've actually checked that checkbox. Control C, control C again, we'll uncheck it. Now that's a standard Emacs, GNU Emacs key binding. In uh, Doom Emacs, there is a different key binding. You could also use space MX. So I'm gonna use the Doom Emacs key binding, space MX. Space M X does the exact same thing. Actually, the good new Emacs key binding, Control C, Control C, is probably a little easier to use actually than the Doom specific key binding of Space M X. But either one works. Now, one interesting thing when you have a list of checkbox items, what you could do in the top heading, which in my case would be review lists and checkboxes in org mode. If I go up here and get into insert mode, and I do a empty bracket here, but inside the bracket, instead of making it empty, I'm going to do a slash. Now let me hit escape and I'm going to go down here and I'm going to do space MX to tick that on. You see, we checked that, but look what happened in that bracket. One of three, because we have completed one of three tasks technically. If I go down to the next line and I do space MX, now we've completed two of three. And of course, if I go down to the last one, space MX, we have completed three of three. Now let me undo these and you will see they will go back to being zero of three. Now, one thing about list items, you can have lists within lists. So if I go here, if I do a paste here, I'm just going to paste this nested list within a list. So this list item, this works for bullets too, has sub list items. So list item one, two, and three. And what I could do here is watch what happens when I check these. So if I do space MX, you see that now instead of an empty box, it has a minus symbol. That's letting you know that some of what you needed to do for this list item has been completed. Not everything, but if I eventually complete everything, watch what happens. Space MX to check that, space MX to check that. And once I check these three sub items, then that top item is checked because we've completed everything that was involved, right? As long as you complete the three sub list items, then that top item is completed as well. And I'm going to go ahead and paste some more stuff in here and uh, talk about org agenda. Now, we've already talked about how to launch it. Space O capital A. That's a Doom Emacs scheme binding. So space O capital A gets you this list. And we've already talked about after space O capital A. If you hit A, you get to the agenda view. If you hit T, you get to the to do list view all your to-do items. But we haven't talked about uh, one other one that you will often use will be S for search for keywords. So let me hit S in this case. It's gonna ask for searching for keywords. Maybe the keyword I want to search for is org, because I know there's several lines in this document that have the word org. If I hit enter, it will actually show me the to-do items that have the word org as part of the search string. So this list here, uh, to-do, make a video about org agenda, to-do, review, list, and check boxes in org mode. And then, of course, this project that I just pasted, the project is called org agenda launch with space OA. All right, let me cue to quit out of that. So the search works. You can also use regular expressions in the search. So if I do space O capital A S for another search, I could do something like a 
asterisk symbol meaning hey it's a wild card character and then maybe give it a couple of characters like ke and you see it returned a couple of different lines from the document from that uh, this to do make a video about org agenda because asterisk ae does match the word make it also matches the word keyword as well cue to quit out of that by the way, I, I, since I pasted this, you guys didn't actually see me write it, but these weird bullet points here are just more asterisks. So this is a second level asterisk, this is a third level, and this is a fourth level because I use funny symbols in mind. But if you guys actually wanted to see me write these, you know, that's a third asterisk, and this is a fourth asterisk. So if I actually just keep deleting, one, two, three, four asterisks. Now let's get back to scheduling some items. So I'm going to scroll back up and and I had already scheduled that first to do item, but I didn't add a schedule to the second to do item. So let's go ahead and schedule it. You guys remember the Doomy Max Keybinding space MDS for the org schedule and we can pick a date. The date I will leave as today's date and I will say we need to do this at 11 p.m. And I hit enter and you guys see that now this to do item now has up under it scheduled and the time and date tonight at 11 p.m. If I do a space O capital A and then A for the agenda view, you see I have both those to do items. Kind of cool. But one interesting thing you can do and let me zoom into the to do item if I can. I'm not sure. Can I zoom in in this view? I've never actually tried it. It doesn't appear that I can zoom in in org agenda, at least the default key binding that I use, which is control and the plus symbol doesn't work here because I guess the control key is used for other things in the agenda view. But that's fine. I, I don't need to be zoomed in. You guys can surely can tell it's just a list of dates with every item that has a schedule listed. But one neat thing you can do, let me cue to quit out of that, is if I go back into the scheduled event here, so the second item, I'm going to get into insert mode, I'm going to do a space, and I'm going to do plus plus 1D for one day. So I want to schedule this event Friday at 11 p.m., tonight at 11 p.m., plus plus one day, meaning do this every day, every single day, basically. So every plus one day, we're going to do the same event. So let me get back into the agenda view. So if I do space O, capital A, A, and now you see all of a sudden I have all these other to do items because reviewing lists and check boxes in org mode. Now I have to do that tonight at 11 p.m., tomorrow night at 11 p.m., Sunday night at 11 p.m., etc. Uh, every day till the end of time, basically, is what I just did there. So if you have events that are basically on your schedule every single day, that is how you do that. You just get in there and, you know, behind the time and date, just do a space plus plus one D. So I could really see using org mode and org scheduling in my life. The org agenda feature is just fantastic. So I have this this list here, which was task list. We'll say that was my work task list. But let me do another top level heading because maybe I want to do a personal task list as well. And maybe I want to do a, a subheading for this, maybe stuff around the house. So home task you know what, I'll go ahead, since we talked about it, and do this empty bracket with the slash here. And let's go ahead and start adding some list items. What do I need to do? Well, I need to mow the yard. Then control enter to get the next item. Put trash out for pickup. I might need to schedule that. You know, that's a one day a week kind of thing. Then, you know, maybe I need to wash my car. It's getting kind of dirty as well. Now let me go ahead and add another second level heading here. Let me get rid of the empty spaces there. And this one is going to be my shopping list for the week. So I don't want to create a lengthy shopping list here, but I think what I probably want to do is just put the bare essentials here, uh, things I absolutely need. I do have a cat, so I need to pick up some cat food. And then if I hit control return, the next most important item I should pick up while I'm shopping is beer. And then the next most important thing, you know what? I could really use some bacon because it's practically its own food group. It goes with everything. And we'll add one more. How about more beer? All right. And that shopping list is really important. It's something I definitely need to do. I'm not exactly sure when I need to do it, but let's at least add it to our to-do list. And you know what? 
let's go ahead and schedule it too. We know it's important, so let's go ahead and make sure we have it down for a date. So remember, org schedule, space MDS, and I'm going to schedule it for, I'm going to do shift arrow, and I'm going to schedule it for Wednesday, September the 30th, and we'll do it, I don't know, about 10 a.m. If I just do 10 colon zero zero uh, 24 hour time, of course, that's already 10 a.m., so I don't need to add the, the a.m. for it. And now space O capital A, A again for the agenda now has my to-do item for Wednesday the 30th. Now I'm scheduled at 10 o'clock in the morning to take care of that shopping list. If I do space O capital A T, the shopping list is also in the to-do list because I marked it as a to-do item. If it wasn't marked as a to-do item, it would not be in this list. So remember, you have two different uh, uh, lists there. You have the agenda view and then you have your to-do view. And under my personal task list, I think the next thing I need to do is very important. Let's go ahead and make a gym schedule. So let's go ahead and we'll do these as uh, items as well. I think the first most important day should be leg day, of course. Control, return, and then we need to do, how about chest, shoulders, and biceps? Yeah, why not? And then what does that leave? Well, we need to do abs, back, and triceps. Yeah, that covers pretty much the whole body. We'll just leave it at that. Let's go ahead and schedule that. So I'm going to go up here. Uh, I'm not going to mark it as a to-do item. Well, you know what? I'll mark it as a to-do item. Why not? It doesn't matter. This is just for fun. But we need to schedule it. When am I going to go to the gym? Well, the gym is a recurring thing, but maybe I wanted to go every day for four or five days straight. So what I could do here is let me do space MDS to get the org schedule and I'm going to schedule it for tomorrow which is Saturday and I'll schedule myself to go to the gym at 9 a.m. and now what I could do well I, let's first take a look at it in the org agenda so space O capital A lowercase a you see if I go down my gym schedule is at 9 a.m. tomorrow cue to quit but since I want to go several days in a row also at 9 a.m. what I could do is I could go down here and let me get into insert mode, and behind that timestamp, I'm going to do a dash dash, and then the brackets, opening brackets, I'm going to schedule it for 2020 dash 09 dash 30th, you know, every day for the rest of the month here, basically, so four days straight. The 30th, I believe, is a Tuesday, so i got to make sure I get that right, and then the closing bracket. So let me hit escape, and now when I go space O capital A, lowercase a, to get back into the agenda view, I should have the uh, gym on the list every day, and I do. You see, now I have, actually, I have two gym items on the list here because, it, let's see, one of five, two of five, three of five, four of five, and then the last day is five of five. So I scheduled it five days straight there. Now, one thing I noticed is I actually did not give it a time. It, it doesn't look like. Did I not add 9 a.m. to that? Let me cue to quit out of that. It is 9 a.m. here, the first date, but I didn't add a time on the last one. Let me escape out of that and then do space O A A. And now it should actually have the right times. Yes, before it just had it on the list, but, but they weren't set to a time. Actually, they're still not set to the time. The first one is set to 9 a.m. The last one is set to 9 a.m. But everything in between is still just a to-do item, but it doesn't have a specific time. So I'm not exactly sure how I would go about that, but uh, I'm sure I could figure it out if I actually reviewed the documentation on that. But it is pretty neat that you can actually schedule things for multiple days in a row. So let's get into some of the configuration stuff that you need to worry about when you do things with org mode and org agenda. So I'm going to open up a second window here in Doomy Max, and I'm going to open up my Doomy Max config. And my config file for Doom Max, by the way, is an org document. You can actually write your config as an org document. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go back to this window and zoom out. I'm zoomed way in on that one. All right. So in my config file, I have a section called org mode. And in Doom Emacs, I have this section here that starts with after exclamation point space org. What this does is in Elisp, this says, hey, after this module loads, then do everything else. And this is very important because in Doom Emacs, org mode 
has some default settings. And if you don't add this line here, the after org, what you're going to find is that whatever settings you have are probably going to be loaded almost immediately, instantaneously when Doom Emacs loads. But then Doom will eventually launch its own defaults and overwrite yours. So you have to specify, do not set my settings until after Doom Emacs does what it wants with the its own default settings. So that's why you need that line. It's very important. And then after it loads the default org module, I want it to set org directory. So you see set Q space org dash directory. This is where all my org documents should live on my computer. And I put them in documents slash org. I also specify that org dash agenda dash files. This is where all my agenda files should be. And what is the agenda files? Well, when you do space O capital A and then, you know, some other letter such as A for the agenda, where is it getting this stuff? Well, it's in my case, I'm telling it, get that stuff from document slash org slash agenda dot org. And it doesn't just have, have to be one file. You could specify two, three, however many files you want. You could even specify a directory, uh, maybe a directory and then a wildcard character such as asterisk.org. So pull my agendas from this directory and everything that ends in .org. For example, uh, a lot of people do just one file, maybe one big file. Uh, if you schedule a lot of things, just having one file for your agenda could become kind of a hassle, kind of tedious, because it would be a giant file and you'd have a ton of stuff on your schedule. Uh, so you may want to break it up into multiple files if you have a lot of stuff that you're working with. Now, I had mentioned that you can mark items as to do, project, done, and, and various other things. So remember space MT gets you this menu, and this is where you can mark things as T for to do, P for project, S for start, W for wait, H for hold. These are the default states for to do items in Doom Emacs, but you don't have to use these. You can customize these to be whatever you want. And as an example here, I had this line that I've commented out, but I will just show you that I can overwrite the defaults in Doom Emacs. So let me do a colon W for write. And this is set Q space org dash to do dash keywords. So set the org to do keywords to be to do T project P because I like those. I, th I think those make sense. But I make videos. I want a, a to do item to be a video. So I did video V. I also kept wait for W. And then I have this one here, which is a slash or pipe symbol, basically. The pipe symbol separates the to do keywords. Everything before the pipe symbol are active. Everything behind the pipe symbol are inactive states. So a to do item, a project, a video, those are active to do states. Done and canceled are obviously inactive to do states, meaning I don't want you to appear in the to do list. That's basically what those mean. It means done items, canceled items don't appear in the to do list. To do project video and wait will appear in my to do list. So let me rebuild my Doom Emacs with these settings. So I'm going to GG to get to the top of this document. And then I'm going to do Control C, Control C to refresh my org config, my config.org here. And then I need to tangle it because I have to run org babble tangle to convert my config.org into a config.el because it really needs to be an elisp document. Now you guys don't have to worry about that unless you are also using a org file as your config. Most of you are probably just going to have a config.el that you work with so you don't have to do any of what I just did to reload things and then you know what I'm just going to go ahead and close out Emacs and I'm going to run a kill all Emacs as well just to make sure that my Emacs will be using the new config and let me launch it and let me get back into my agenda.org and let me zoom in a little bit and let's go to this first item at least the first to do item that is if I do space MT you now see I have different options for my to-do states. To-do, project, video, wait, done, and canceled. So if I wanted to change this from a to-do item instead of T, I could do V. And now I've made this to-do item make a video about org agenda and, you know, the to-do state is video. So let me do space O capital A T for my to-do list. And you see it's video, make a video about org agenda. 
Give me Q to get out of that. Uh, let me do a space FR to search for recent files. One other thing I wanted to do in my config.org, or at least show you guys how to do this, is let me get back down to the org mode section. By default, when you schedule something in org mode, it of course gives a timestamp. But when you mark something as done, so you have a to-do item, and eventually you complete it, so you find that to-do item, you hit return, and you mark it as done. But wouldn't it be cool if it added a timestamp when you actually completed the task? That seems like something that it probably should do out of the box, but it doesn't. But you can make it do that. So I have this line here set q space org dash log dash done space the single quote time and what that does is when you mark something as done in org it's gonna add a timestamp to it that's all that means so let me write and let me get back up here i'm gonna refresh this i'm gonna run the org babble tangle again let me relaunch emacs and now let me get back into my agenda.org zoom in again and now this to-do item that i have the make a video about org agenda. Watch what happens when I toggle this as done. So I just highlight it and hit enter and it marks it as done. I still have the scheduled timestamp, but right before it closed. And then I have the timestamp of when I hit done on it. So that is probably a very important line. I think everybody probably wants to add to their config. If you're going to use org agenda, it makes sense when you have a project and you mark it done, you want that timestamp. Now one other thing you could do, let me get back into the config.org, is if you did not want to just do a timestamp, maybe you wanted to leave a note as well. Instead of doing the org log done as time, you could do set q space org dash log dash done, and then single quote note. And what this does is when you mark a to-do item as done, you get to leave a note. It also adds a timestamp, but it also adds an extra note that you have to write. So let me write this and let me reload my config. So let me relaunch Doom Emacs here, space FR to get to my recent files. Let me get back into the agenda.org. And now this to-do item is still here. And now let me mark it as done. And instead of giving a closed timestamp, it'll give a closed timestamp, but it will also ask me to write a note. So I'm going to go down to this to-do item, hit enter, and it marked it as done. It gave a closing timestamp, and then it has a split over here it's asking me write a note i'm gonna write i finished this early because i'm awesome hit escape and control c control c to kill that split and you see now i it's marked done it has a closing time stamp the original scheduling time stamp and then it has a closing note as well and the closing note it also has a time stamp when i i guess left the note it says i finished this early because i'm awesome so that is a very brief look at org mode, org scheduling, and org agenda. It's just fantastic. I don't, I, I may actually start using this like on a regular basis. I may actually just start planning out all of my days. You know, when I just did this on the fly here, making out uh, things like home tasks, shopping lists, and especially a gym schedule. Yeah, I may actually start doing that. Why not? Why not be able to just pull up my agenda for the day and actually figure out what I actually have planned, uh, schedule times for it, and, and be ready to go with this stuff? Maybe it will make me more productive. Again, I've never been a productivity tool user, but I do enjoy playing with org mode. Like it's, it's fun to use org mode. It really is. Even if I'm just goofing off, like making that agenda.org document here on camera for you guys, it's just fun playing with this stuff. And so I, you know, it wouldn't be tedious. I think sometimes oh, it's just sitting down, making a list is a tedious task, but the playing with Emacs, I actually enjoy. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of the show. I need to thank Michael, Gabe, Corbinian, Mitchell, Devin, Fran, Arch5530, Akami Channel, Chuck, Claudio, Donnie, Dylan, George, Caleb, Devils, Lewis, Paul, Scott, and Willie. These guys, they are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode about org mode and org agenda wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because this channel is supported by you guys, the community. If you'd like to support my work, Look for DistroTube over on Patreon. Alright guys, peace.